Well, hello YouTube. How you doing? I'm not doing too bad today. I'm doing pretty well. I'm reasonably here. I think most of the time my head is here. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit scatterbrained, I guess, a little to a certain extent. But the main reason that I'm feeling scatterbrained is the fact that I've had to deal with Telstra for the last 20 days or so. I mean, I've probably, well, not 20 days, but I've had to call about 20 times and I've gone through 20 different people in tech support. Now, finally, I got the problem sorted out. That's not the issue. I did actually, at the end of the last person, get the problem sorted out that I needed to get sorted out. But basically, it was a new mobile plan, which I was told by the salesperson at the end. Well, they pretty much turned around and they said to me, Daniel, well, they didn't say that, but, well, they did say Danielle. Just the way they, I don't know, the way she pronounced it. Anyway, the point is, okay, she's, she's given me the plan. She's told me the whole detail of it. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Um, it got stuck in provisioning. I called to see what was going on when I was getting the mobile, things like that. Anyway, they sent me a mobile, and supposedly it wasn't the mobile that was actually most meant to be sent to me. So that sort of was a big stuff up on their part. Then the mobile that did get sent to me was actually on a new number, which was a brand new plan. And I'm like, what the fuck? Seriously? So I had to put my IME number and all the sort of serial number details and everything else, give them that to put into their database, which was okay. That was fine. I could do that. But it pissed me off that I had to go through this whole rigmarole to get the whole thing fixed. Now, um, at the end of it, they were owing me about 70, was it? Yeah, about 70, it was about 75 bucks, to be honest, um, or 70, or $74, something around that price anyway. It was, yeah, definitely about 75 bucks. So at the end of it, it was about, um, it was ending, it was coming out at about 70 bucks a month. Now, okay, that's fine. The plan was originally 70 bucks a month, but the other side of it, you've got to understand is they gave me a $10 discount, so it should have come out at $60 a month, which it didn't. So ultimately, why did it not come out at $70, $74 a month? Or oh, sorry, $60 a month? Ultimately, it came out for that reason, or the reason that it came out that way in the first place. The main problem they were having, the main issue they were having, is pretty much that when they did do it, um, now, supposedly it, was, it wasn't a recontract. That's the reason the salesperson had probably, apparently the salesperson had put it, hadn't put it through as a recontract. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck, seriously. What the fuck's going on here? I, I said it was a recontract and I wanted the same number because they were giving me a new number. I'm like, no, I don't need that. So, got that fixed. Then finally, I said it should be $60 or $64. My bill should be $64, which it wasn't. So I added some Telstra premium service, which supposedly I was told by the salesperson was a free etiquette thing because I've been with Telstra for like nine years or something like that. So, I mean, look at the end of it. That's what they told me. I was told one thing and led, led to believe another sort of combination of. And it was fairly confusing because I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, hold on a fucking second. You told me that supposedly I'm, get, I'm getting these these different perks for free and, you know, I'm getting these discounts and stuff like that. And I'm like, hey, that's cool. I know and I understand I'm getting this stuff, but why the fuck would you tell me and then not give it to me? Or give it to me and charge it for charge me for it. Now, um, the phone, fantastic phone. It's a Galaxy, it's a Samsung Galaxy S6. Nice phone by any means. I got a brand new case for it and a brand new screen cover and everything else, so that's all good. Well, I fixed that all up. That's great. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm quite happy with that in the way it is now. But what I don't understand, especially somebody in an older age bracket who's who, who's easily confused, who who doesn't understand the technical side of things and how to get all the site type of shit that you can get out of this phone, whether it be the IME, oh, sorry, I am. IMEI number, which is the basically your mobile equipment number, the international number you pretty much get for any mobile device these days. The thing is, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck? Like, for, say somebody did have to find those details out and did have to get all that information. I mean, I'm sorry, but it'd be confusing for somebody, especially who's, you know, um, in that older age bracket. And what I don't understand in the whole perspective of, of that in the long run, is that it It seems like they were being stupid about the whole thing, you know, I all I wanted to do was get the problem fixed, I just wanted a reduction in my bill, and I wanted things taken off that weren't necessarily needed. And at the end of it, 
I had to sit there and argue, sort of berate and say, well, you know, I'll, I'll go to the ombudsman or something like that and just, you know, threaten legal action or whatever. Combination of that stuff, just to get an actual reaction out of them. Now, normally... I mean, I'm, I'm one for defending people, not defending, but defending the common man, defending people who have to get on onto Telstra all the time for different things. And obviously, Telstra has a lot of issues when it comes to customer service and customer communication. Uh, even their customer service departments do not communicate correctly with each other. I did give them a fair enough review at the end of it. They did actually end up fixing it, but, but it shouldn't take 20 calls and 20 different people to fix my fucking problem in the first place. I'm sorry, but that's a pretty unacceptable level of service in my mind. Um, I think, personally, they need to work on that. That's something that needs to be worked on and needs to be fixed. It needs to be put into perspective for the whole entire company. Because, I mean, at the end of it, you know... Um, yeah, sorry, I have a headache at the moment. But I think, in the whole perspective of the entire company as a, as a whole... The, the the different departments, whether it be the sale departments, don't communicate with each other. They don't communicate correctly with each other. Now, I'm sorry, but at the end of it, you... You... You should communicate with your different departments. You shouldn't have to have this communication issue where there's a big communication breakdown, pretty much, and the, to and the entire thing just turns to shit when anybody tries to fix it. Now, look... I'm not accusing the individual salespeople. I'm accusing the system that they're working with. I'm accusing the system that they're working with to be have have its faults and its obvious repair needs. Now, it's not perfect, I admit, but you know, um, no system is truly perfect. But I mean, their system could be a lot better in the sense of the way it, it efficiently brings out communication. Um, I tried to get back to the original salesperson I was talking to. I couldn't even do that. I managed to get an email from them. Weeks later, when I originally, from the original inquiry I made, which I couldn't fucking understand, to be honest, because that didn't make any sense. Uh, it didn't, I'm serious, it didn't make any sense. Uh, why did it not make any sense? I'll tell you why it didn't. The reason it didn't make sense to me is, at the end of it, I should have been able to get straight onto the salesperson in question. I should have been able to ultimately uh, have a better communication level with the staff. Now, yes, they have reviews, you know, you could review the individual people you're talking to and stuff like that. That's cool. Okay, no argument there. But, that's beside the point. That wasn't all the whole entirety of it, alright? The truth of the situation is it was hard to get back to the original person you talked to. Unless you had a specific name. But even if you had a, even if you had a name, it wasn't, it was overly difficult too. Um, which... Look, I'm sorry, I, I mean, I hate to say it, but, you know... Sorry, I just, I just, I, I feel like a beer. Um... I think it shouldn't be that hard to get back and communicate with somebody. To be able to have that level of communication where it's like, oh, okay, can you understand what the hell I'm talking about? Can you understand the words that come in my mouth, bitch? You know what I mean? But, <laughs> like, I mean... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's... Between departments in a business, you should be able to have clear and present communication. That should always be immediate. There should never be a situation where there's a there's a lack of communication because it, it just it slows the business down completely. It slows our productivity completely down too. Now, oh my neck. Sorry, I do apologise. My neck is a bit on the sore side. I, Probably, yet. oh, there we go, that's better. Bit of a crack there, but. Look, I'm far from perfect, but I know my level of communication is much more efficient than what this company is currently doing. Look, I don't know, look, just my personal experience. I've ne In the nine years, though, that I've been with Telstra, because I've never actually used the support system in, the entire, in that entire time, I've never had a problem, because I've never had to call them for anything. Because most of the time, I've had pretty reliable signal and everything else. Like, their signal and their hardware obviously works very well. No no gripes there at all, I'll be honest. Their, their hardware and their signals work fantastic. Um, equipment, so far, I'm going to say, is not that bad. It seems to be actually quite functional. Now, is that 
contrary to everything that you, we know about it, or know about Telstra, yeah, I guess, except the only thing that I don't agree with is ADSL. ADSL, ADSL 2 is absolutely shocking. Um, the abysmal conditions that they leave the lines in are absolutely di <clears throat> bleh, disgusting. No, just no words to really express how disgusting they are. Um, at the end of it, the truth of the situation is that these, that the company needs to learn that, you know, we, I mean, especially when they're doing line maintenance. Anyway, I could go into a whole rant, but my point is, this was my experience with the nightmare part of it, which was, you know, um, dealing with, pretty much dealing with Telstra mobile side of it. Pretty much the mobile side of it, any contract stuff and places. I mean, sales agents, I mean, look, I'm, I'm not going to accuse sales agents of things that they, that they may have said on my, I mean, look at the end of it. They said what they said, but, you know, it... <sighs> they said certain things. Now, certain promises were made, certain promises weren't given back, so, I mean, at the end of it, you know, well, whatever. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm just going to point out that there was a bit of a nightmare to get the whole thing sorted out, and it was a big freaking issue and a big frustration for me to get the entire thing together. Now, this was just... In a space of two weeks, I think it was like two, or maybe two or three weeks. Yeah, about two or three weeks. Maybe. It was about two or three weeks. Yeah, it was about two or three weeks. So, I mean, the truth of the situation is, and the truth of it all, is that in that, those two weeks, it took longer to sort things out. You know, I mean, it, it, I don't know, as I said, to me, I feel you shouldn't have to call 20 times to get something fixed. And, you know, you shouldn't have to do that. So, what do I digress in the whole thing? Um, be careful. Well, I won't say Telstra has a bad network, because they don't. They have a good network. They have a very reliable network. What I find with Telstra is it's mostly dealing with the departmentalization of each individual part of it. You know what I mean? Because the... T whatever's happening is between the departments because it seems that between these different departments there's not much communication going on so you know it's all pretty much in the shitter at that point so I'm guessing it's just the way that they do they have the different policies that they have and I'm guessing it's the way they do things that is probably part of the issue you know what I mean so I mean at the end of it fuck I don't know it's just fucking ridiculous to be truthful Anyway, on to new projects and new things that I'm finding interesting and things I'm definitely looking into doing. And my neck is still killing me, but it's alright, we'll, we'll go with that. Okay, so, let's see. MSI, as you can see. This is a GeForce. Uh, now, this new motherboard which I picked up, which is an MSI AM2, AM2 Plus motherboard which I'm going to be using for a project in the future which is going to involve me building a computer and ultimately doing one of my big builds and my recondition builds where I just build the machine and put it out there now yes I'm doing that that's one thing I'm doing <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. that's one thing I'm definitely doing is on my agenda so far now aside from that um, I've also got some other stuff coming as well. I've got some, a couple of Ethernet over power adapters, which I've got two here already, but the problem is they're Netcom and they do have a bit of a fidgety thing going on. So I'm going to see if I can still set the router up in my back room or in my, you know, not my back room, in my, um, see if I can set the router up in the kitchen, pretty much. Which was where it initially was, and it was out to the back room, or well, pretty much where my workbench is. So, at this point in time, I'm, th I'm thinking to myself, fuck it, you know, I, I need to get this stuff sorted. So, uh, I bought those, uh, only $21.99, which wasn't too bad. Motherboard wasn't too bad, it was $28 and $11 postage, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going too bad with that. Uh, see what the happens with the seller anyway, the, they've just waiting for them to, uh, at this point send me the motherboard. Once I get the motherboard, I'm going to be putting some RAM into it. I'm going to be putting a hard drive, match it up with it. I've got a spare case out there, which was actually an old case that I used to have for um, my computer, which I'm going to be using as a build case. It's a really big case. I mean, I, I, I wasn't going to use it, but I thought, fuck it, you know. 
it's going to save me money, money in the long run if I don't have to buy a new case. So, um, aside from that, what else have I been doing? Um, I've been, uh, I mean, I, I've been doing a combination of different stuff the last few weeks. I've been trying to keep myself busy. I've been doing, well, I've, I'll be honest, I haven't been that busy the last few weeks. I've been watching a bit of TV, relaxing, and just sort of vegging a bit. Because it is sort of still the holiday season for me, technically. And I'm just coming off my holiday break, so I'm sort of getting back into the swing of things. Hopefully business will pick up this week, which is... Uh, what's this week? This week is um, the 19th of January. So uh, hopefully I should get some more business this week. I'm going to see if I can go back to the tech shed, maybe, maybe, and give them a bit of a hand, and you know, generally just help them out. That would be my preference. Uh, what else do I feel like doing? Um, well, I'm definitely doing that project. There's a couple of other projects that I was interested in doing, but I just thought, fuck it, you know, I'll just go with whatever's go with the flow, basically. Uh, at this point in time, I'm just I'm I'm trying to find little projects to fill my time in, but it's also like I'm watching a couple of shows and just relaxing as well. I'm also trying to get into my IT stuff a bit. I mean, um, what else do I end up doing? I, I've been bucking up my advertisements and everything else on Gumtree, which has been great. That's been beautiful so far. It's been working pretty well. Uh, aside from Gumtree, what else? Um, I've been doing, I've been doing Gumtree advertisements. I did a few on my Facebook page. I haven't really been doing much with YouTube. I have stopped you produ I stopped you. Uh, I stopped YouTube production over the holidays, uh, just to sort of give myself a bit of a break, take it slow, you know, just relax, pretty much, which was my ultimate plan, really. So I'm going to get back into the year and just pull myself forward and push myself forward and get into everything and just, you know. Hopefully, um, that way I can find my way through things and sort of clear my head a bit. In the meantime, I'm happy that everybody's... Well, I hope... I'm happy and I hope everybody's having a good start to the new year. And I hope you're all feeling productive because I had a pretty productive day today. Um, helped my dad out. Uh, did a, helped him out with a few eBay bits and pieces. And you know, I'm feeling pretty good about that. I've got to do eBay myself, personally. Um, which... eBay sort of... I'm stuck in transit at the moment, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work out whether I'm going to re-enlist things or not because of uh, just the fact that uh, eBay's transit. Yeah, so I'm sort of I, I'm sort of stuck in limbo with it because I want to I want to put some more listings on, but I just don't want to cost myself too much in re-listing fees because there is actually some re-listing fees for some of the stuff, and it was actually free before I think on the days that I picked specifically. So yeah. We'll see how we go. It doesn't really matter. So far, I'm doing pretty damn well, people, and I'm feeling pretty damn happy, to be truthful. I mean, I'm not... I, I could be doing better. I could be doing better in the sense I could be, you know, have more jobs to do, have more work to do. Because, I, truthfully, I'm probably a bit bored. Um, I just like being vegging out and watching shows mostly, so, you know, that just uh, I do that sometimes when I'm bored. Now, the truth is I'm a bit bored, and I've, you know, uh, yeah... And when I get bored, I just sort of go all over the place anyway. But anyway, aside from that, things I did pick up. I nose trim because I need it for my nose hairs because I have a really hairy fucking nose. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, it's back. It's killing me. Just like no tomorrow. So. My phone, as you can see, looking good. Uh, so what we got? New phone, new one of these, new motherboard for new project, and some power over Ethernet adapters, pretty much. Which is looking good so far, I'm pretty happy. Anyway, I think I'll leave it there. Thank you very much, YouTube. Um, hope you enjoy my videos as per usual. Stay tuned. I've got more coming up, obviously, through the year. Or, you know, as, as we get more into the year and see exactly what direction I'm going to go with it. I don't know. Um, I'm hoping my channel does build itself up a lot more and I build myself up a lot more. 
which I have been trying to build myself up, but then, you know, I fall short sometimes in some cases. Anyway, thank you very much, and uh, stay tuned. I hope you enjoy my videos as per usual, and, um, yep. Thumbs up. Oh, so, yes, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. And, um, of course, like, favorite, and subscribe. You can also follow me on different services. You can also subscribe to me on... Uh, you can also contribute to my Patreon campaign. My Patreon campaign, my PayPal, uh, my goldmine thing, which was, was a GTA, a G2A or something like that. So anyway, that, that's all around there anyway. Okay, so stay tuned. I've got tons more coming up. Oh, so I do apologize. I'm feeling a bit... Ugh, at the moment. So I'm going to go and relax for a while, clear my head for a bit, and then I'll get back to some more YouTube production. All right, thank you very much, and, uh, well, as per usual, stay tuned.